Dear students, welcome to the short lecture video series of computer organization and architecture. We had completed unit 1 and unit 2 in the classroom itself and uh, started unit 3, central processing unit. And in the unit 3, we had completed unit uh, topic 1, general register organization, how the registers of the computer will interact with the ALU then stack organization what is stack what are the operations performed over the stack and what is the application of the stack and then we have seen addressing modes there are 10 different addressing modes implied immediate register register indirect auto increment decrement direct indirect and some addressing modes depending upon effective address relative index base where the effective address is calculated by adding two addresses one is existing in the instruction itself and the other one is stored in some register program counter index register or base register and then we started the fourth topic or the fourth topic typical instructions of a computer starting with arithmetic instructions we had seen all these uh, arithmetic instructions Next, logical and bit manipulation instructions, it is also over, and then shift instructions. These three types of instructions are over. The remaining thing is program control instructions. Okay, today's topic is this. Let us complete this also. What is program control instruction? Program is executed line by line, instruction by instruction. And all these instructions are stored in memory sequentially, one location after the another. And while executing the instructions, one instructions will be fetched from the memory based on the address stored in the program counter. Now, usually this program counter address will be incremented by one. That is the program execution sequence in general now this sequence can be altered with the help of certain special type of instructions like program control instructions like branch jump skip call return compare and test are not exactly program control instructions but still there is relationship with these program control instructions that's why these two are also listed in this table okay we will talk about these two instructions let us start with branch instructions. There are 20 branch instructions like this branch if 0, branch if not 0, branch if carry, branch if not carry, branch if plus, branch if minus, branch if warp flow. There are many branch instructions and jump instructions. These are uh, used interchangeably. They both mean same thing. They both are similar. The only difference is they are used in different addressing modes. So, let us understand what are these branch and jump instructions. These instructions can change the execution sequence of the program. They can change the address content of the program counter. Usually, it is incremented by 1 to go to the next instruction. So, these instructions come along with their own addresses and that address is stored into the program counter to, to change the execution sequence of the program itself. Now come to skip. We had seen seven different types of skip instructions previously. ISJ, skip on input flag, skip on output flag. What is the common thing? In all these instructions, the next instruction to be executed will be skipped. How will be done? How it will be done? You just need to increment the program counter. Okay. And when it will be done? Whenever the condition is satisfied. There will be a condition. And if that condition is satisfied, the next instruction will be skipped. Otherwise, it will get executed. Okay. Now, come to the call and return instructions. These two instructions are always used in conjunction with the subroutine. You know what is subroutine. Subroutine is a small program which will be used by the main program for certain tasks. It is like a function. You will call functions into the main program. So, you are calling a function into the main program that means you are changing the execution sequence of the program from one address location to another address location because these functions or subroutines are stored 
at some other location in the memory. So, in order to execute them, the program execution sequence must go there. Okay, how it will be done? You just need to store that new address location of that subroutine into the program counter. Okay, at the end of that uh, function or subroutine, you need to restore the address of the main program where you left and that is done by this return. Okay, in order to come back to the main program, use this return. Now, come to the compare and test. These are uh, not changing the program execution sequence directly. They are just helping to do so for the branch instructions or jump instructions. They are setting the conditions. Okay, how they are doing? Let us look at the compare. Compare instruction is performing a subtraction operation, two complement subtraction operation between two operands A and B. Now, that operation can result uh, three different uh, results A greater than B, A equal to B, A less than B and based on these some status bit conditions will be set and based on those status bit conditions this branch or jump operations will be executed and test instruction will be performed by doing AND operation between the two operands and that result will set some status bit conditions based on those status bit conditions subsequently some kind of branch or jump instructions will get executed. So, these compare and test are not exactly program control instructions, but these two instructions will set the status bit conditions for the subsequent branch or jump operations. Okay, that is why these two are also listed in this table. Now, let us go to those status bit conditions because without these status bit conditions, it is not possible to uh, have conditional branch instructions or conditional jump instructions. So, status bit conditions. In computers, there are there uh, there is a provision called flag register, which is a register having group of flag flags group of bits, group of flip-flops. So, each and every flip-flop can store one bit information. So, as it is a flag register that each and every bit is a flag as I previously told you. Here, a 4 bit flag register is shown where 4 different flags are stored. One is overflow, another one is 0, another one is sign and then carry. So, these 4 flags are acting as 4 conditions and based on these conditions that branch or jump instructions will be executed. First one is C carry, you know carry when some arithmetic operation is performed and uh, because of that arithmetic operation uh, the carry might be a result. If I add 7 and 7 I will be getting 14 that one is the carry and this is sign bit this indicates whether the content stored in the accumulator is positive or negative based on the MSB. If the MSB is 1, it is positive. If the MSB is 0, that is negative. And uh, Z, 0. Okay, this flag indicates whether the contents of the accumulator is having all zeros or not. If the content of accumulator is all zeros, then this bit will become 1, otherwise 0. And the last one is overflow. This, uh, this is the special flag. This will become 1 when there is a overflow. Okay. How to identify the overflow? You perform exclusive or operation between C7 and C8. And if the result is 1, then overflow flag is set, otherwise 0. Okay. This is the hardware which is used to set these four conditions. Okay. So, F0 to F7 is like our accumulator contents, it is an 8 bit uh, ALU. So, F7, F0 to F7 is the accumulator contents. So, based on this MSB, the sign flag will be set and uh, C8 sets the carry flag and the exclusive operation between C7 and C8 will set the overflow flag. When the accumulator contents are 0, then 0 flag will be set. So, this is how the status bits are set and then based on those status bit conditions various branch instructions will be executed. Let us start with the 0 condition. If that 0 flag is 1 that means 
branch if zero this will be executed if the zero flag is zero b and z branch if no zero will be executed similarly carry branch if carry branch if no carry similarly sign branch if positive branch if negative sorry plus minus similarly or flow no or flow okay these are the eight in the instructions based on those four conditions now come to signed unsigned compare instructions unsigned compare instructions means the numbers stored in the accumulator are not um, either positive or negative okay they are unsigned so that means the con uh, each and uh, the content of the accumulator representing only magnitude there is no sign now that magnitudes will be compared the compared two operands will be compared and the result is indicated here branch if higher so branching will takes place if a is greater than b or a is greater than or equal to b a less than b a less than or equal to b a equal to b a is not equal to b so based on those conditions the branching decision will be taken how uh, will you know whether it is higher or equal this subtraction operation will be performed as we had previously discussed subtraction operation will give you three results a greater than b a less than b a equal to b so based on those results these branching instructions will be executed so this is unsigned now come to the signed compare conditions here the number stored in the registers the operands are signed so obviously the msb will be representing the sign of the number positive or negative and the remaining bits are representing the magnitude so after comparing these two again you will get three kind of results a greater than b or a less than b or a equal to b so based on the result you can you can take the decision whether to branch or not branch if greater than branch if greater than or equal branch if less than branch if less than or equal like that so these are the different program control instructions the aim of these instructions is to change the execution sequence of the program by changing the program counter contents. Thank you.